Yo, my name is Pum Vong, so ladies and gentlemen, welcome back today. We got a super fun video for you all to watch and enjoy. Now, we are going to be seeing how Madden would draft the 2021 NFL Draft. Now, the draft is actually on April 29th, so it is only a few days away from now. I've been waiting to do this for a very long time, but I think it is the perfect time because I, I'm hoping... All of the trade ups, the trade downs are all dealt with, of course, until the draft day itself. Now, with my luck, I know the Falcons are going to trade down with the Broncos right when I hit upload on this video. But you know what? Everything can't be perfect. <laughs> with all that being said, though, let me just say, my God, bro. This video was a nightmare to set up. You guys are lucky, man. This video just began, but setting this all up has taken a very long time. What I did was download a real date roster with every single offseason move that has happened so far. Whether it is Galladay to the Giants, Mr. Hunter Henry to the Patriots, or William Jackson to the football team, it is all updated. Not only that, but every single or just about every single trade involving draft picks in this year's draft has also been made. The big Orlando Brown trade that happened the other day um, now has the Ravens with two first round picks and the Chiefs have two second rounders. Now, believe it or not, that wasn't even the most dreadful part to do. To get the real rosters here, I had to start at the very beginning of the year, and then I fixed the entire season's results to match how they were in real life, of course. Now, yes, some of them were a little off at first, but trust me, we should now have the exact order, and every single pick should match how it is or will be in real life. Now, before we can get all into this, I did all that so that we could have the most realistic version of this possible. So if you guys could show me your support and hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, I would appreciate that a ton as a fresh and new channel. It would go a long way. You guys have no idea, man. So if you could do those two small little favors that will literally take you just seconds, it would truly put a smile on my face, man. With all that dealt with, though, I think it is finally time we can head ourselves into the official What Would Madden Do 2021 NFL Draft, man. Let's go. All right, so here we are, and as you guys can see, the Niners are at number three, the Dolphins are at number six, man. It's a beautiful thing to see, but let's go ahead and uh, pause this draft now, and if, um, if you guys would like to download this draft class, I will leave it down in the description below the name of it. Now, I'm someone who loves watching mock drafts, so um, I would say my like draft prospect knowledge is definitely above average like i love just watching it and studying it and just hearing about all the new talent that could be coming into the league now these players are not really put in order from best to worst but mainly of where they could potentially go in the draft um however you guys can see it here let's quit wasting time though let's go ahead and go to the number one overall pick now that's going to be the jacksonville jaguars i'm probably just going to talk over every single pick see um what madden does i haven't changed anything on any roster besides like the real life moves of course let's go ahead and sim to the next pick as the Jacksonville Jaguars go with Mr. Trevor Lawrence, quarterback out of Clemson. Now, this is probably like a 99.999% thing. It's been um, pretty much that way since he got even into college. Like, everyone knew it. But he even has a tweet already saying he donated to the Jacksonville community. And he's, like, happy to be a part of the family. This, this pick is pretty much set in stone, if you could say. <laughs> All right, and now at pick number two, we got ourselves the New York Jets. Of course, they just recently traded Sam Darnold, their former number three overall pick, to the Carolina Panthers. So you're, it's pretty much um, going to be a QB, and it's either Zach Wilson or Justin Fields, in my opinion. There could be an outside shot of Trey Lance or maybe even Mac Jones, but I think um, it's really up to Zach Wilson or Justin Fields here. So it's going to be interesting to see where they go with. Um, the main one in real life uh, that's mocked there is Mr. Zach Wilson himself. So let's see, and let's see what Madden... <laughs> what? Wait, wait, wait. Did they like sign a quarterback or something? See, Madden just be like, like I, I tried to control everything to m the best of my ability, bro. But sometimes Madden just does its own thing, all right? And what in the world is this? Yeah, they have Colin Kaepernick. Oh my God. Are you kidding me, Madden? Are you kidding me? All right, well, the Jets went with Kyle Pitts at number two. Oh my God, that's actually so annoying. That's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it took all this time to set up just for the Jets to sign Colin Kaepernick in free agency and then decide to not go with a potential franchise quarterback. Oh my goodness. Number three, that now means Mr. Zach Wilson will fall to number three and he's going to the San Francisco 49ers who of course traded up with the Dolphins. Bro, the Jets, the Jets, the Jets, the Jets. I am lost for words. I'm still in shock that they just went Kyle Pitts, but I mean, it's it's just Madden, but I mean, anything can happen in the draft, man. You never really know until the pick is in and you see it, but uh, I mean, I guess they're rolling with Colin Kaepernick in this world. We're probably going to be simming the uh, first season as well, just to see, you know, which teams improve the most or maybe, maybe even get worse. But number four here, we have the Atlanta Falcons. Now, they're mainly mocked 
um, either Kyle Pitts or a quarterback. I don't think they go quarterback ever in Madden. And Kyle Pitts is off the board, so I actually have no idea where they're going to go here. Maybe Panay Sewell? And it is Mr. Panay Sewell, the left tackle out of Oregon. Uh, highly touted as the best tackle prospect in this class. Him alongside Rashawn Slater. Can't really go wrong with either, but now the Bengals are on the clock at number 5. And they probably would have loved Sewell because Burrow got injured bad last year. He got hit every single game multiple multiple times they desperately need to a uh, to protect him but they got his uh his number one target in the 2019 crazy lsu season in jamar chase i think that's who they're gonna go for here uh seeing how the draft board has shifted <laughs> number five pick number five the cincinnati Bengals are gonna go with jamar chase wide receiver out of lsu so pair him back with jamar chase and get him his favorite target Jamar Ch or Joe Burrow would be really happy. And I, I can see that being a real possibility in real life. I wouldn't be opposed to that. Okay, at number six here, we have the Miami Dolphins. And it is going to be really interesting to see which direction they go um, because of how the draft board shaped up. I mean, they probably wanted either Kyle Pitts or Jamar Chase or Panay Sewell. And now all three of those guys are gone. You can still reunite Tua Tagovailoa with Jalen Waddle or Devontae Smith, though. I think they might trade down if that um, if those other big three are gone, maybe to number nine with uh, the Broncos. And then they can take Justin Fields. And then they can either get Waddle or Smith later on or maybe even Slater. I'm not really too sure, but number six pick here. Of course, no trades. Let's see what the Miami Dolphins do. And they go Devontae Smith. So they go ahead and pair Tua with the Heisman winner and his former teammate from Alabama. Devontae Smith is on the Dolphins. And as a Dolphins fan, I wouldn't be opposed to that. But number seven, now we got the Lions, who probably, probably have the worst roster in the league. It's either them or like the Texans. But of course, they moved on from Stafford this offseason, got themselves Jared Goff now. So like... I don't know if Justin Fields is still on the board here. You take, you probably take Justin Fields. I, I it's just too good to not pass up. It sounds like they want to roll with uh, Jared Goff, but man, maybe it's either they. I mean, I would take Justin Fields if I were them if he fell to them. But Jalen Waddle would also be a great choice. Patrick Sertan to pair him alongside Jeff Fukuda, their number three pick last year, or maybe even Rashawn Slater. Just get that set in stone franchise tackle for the future and i mean you're set right but i think you can go waddle as well because they did lose mr kenny galladay to the giants and then marvin jones to the jacksonville jaguars detroit lions pick number seven the pick is in and they go with rashawn slater so they are getting themselves a franchise tackle for the future and that's definitely not a bad pick in my opinion all right, now with pick number eight, we got the Carolina Panthers, who, of course, just acquired Mr. Sam Darnold because uh, he got kicked out of the Jets because they have Mr. Colin Kaepernick. But do would they take Justin Fields here? I mean, I would certainly be intrigued, even though they do have Sam Darnold now. I'm not sure. Um, they probably would regret trading for Darnold if Fields is still here, but they could still roll with Darnold. Darnold is still great, a great prospect in his own self. He's still only 23, so he has plenty of time to grow. What do you do here? I would go Sertan, maybe. I would go maybe even Waddle. Um, I would have loved Rashawn Slater. Maybe Darisol even goes here, or maybe someone on the defense like Micah Parsons, Quiddy Pay. I don't really know where the Panthers or what direction they want to go for. Last year, they spent a lot of draft capital on the defensive side of the ball with Derek Brown, Jeremy Chin. So, number eight pick, Carolina Panthers. The pick is in. Who are they going to go with? Patrick Sertan, the second, highly doubted as the best cornerback prospect in this class out of Alabama, of course. And I think that's a pretty good option. Their secondary, uh, especially in corner, is definitely not a strong suit. Who do they, who do they even have there? I I really Dante Jackson, and then like Tor Tory Pride Jr. Yeah, it's definitely not the best. So Patrick Sertan will just boost that defense even more and adds to the youth of it as well. Number nine, number nine, number nine. The Denver Broncos last year went with Jerry Judy. Even got another weapon for Drew Locke with Mr. KJ Hamler. But I think it's safe to say Drew Locke is probably not your franchise guy. And with Justin Fields here, with Trey Lance here, and even with Mac Jones here, I think they could potentially take any of these three guys if they fall. And they would be more than happy to at number nine. I think that is the only uh, reasonable pick here for them if in this draft board. So pick number nine, Denver Broncos. I'm expecting Justin Fields here. It should be Justin Fields. Madden, what are you going to do? The oh. <laughs> they go with Micah Parsons. Okay, Micah Parsons is a really interesting prospect now. He was highly doubted at one point as the best defensive player in this class, but he had like some off-field issues, really weird stuff going on with him. And he, I don't know, just more um, like studying him and his film and everything. He's kind of fallen down draft boards a little bit. I like at the beginning of the draft process he was like he could have went like top five or at least top 10 but now i'm seeing him even fall like late 20s but for the broncos to go him at number 10 number nine i mean it wouldn't be the worst choice if vig fangio can maybe you know 
get his mindset right, get him to love football, and just get him, you know, get him going. He could definitely succeed in that already really good Denver Broncos defense with Vaughn Miller coming back. They just signed Kyle Fuller. They have a great secondary, you know, with Justin Simmons, Kareem Jackson. So Micah Parsons being there maybe would be a great choice for them, but you do not pass on Justin Fields if he goes if he falls to them and I don't I don't I have no idea where Justin Fields is going to go now in this draft because Madden is weird <laughs> I think we can all agree on that number 10 now we got the Dallas Cowboys and they are mostly mocked Mr. Patrick Sertan out of Bama but he is now gone so I actually have no idea where they're going to go the other best cornerback prospects in this class are probably Mr. JC Horn had just he tested crazy man he's so good as you can see there and then Caleb Farley as well I JC I swear I made him a first round talent I have no idea. Okay, but yeah, it's either J.C. Horn or Caleb Farley. Caleb Farley was touted as the best cornerback prospect in this class at one point, and then he got back surgery, so it made him fall down draft boards a little bit because there's just a little bit of a concern, you know. There's a percent, there's a percentile chance that you know he doesn't recover fully. Pick number ten, Dallas Cowboys. They're gonna, they are going to go with Quiddy Pay. So they go with an edge rusher. They definitely need to um, address the defense, no matter what. Their offense is already stacked with CeeDee Lamb last year and to already add on to a crazy offense. But yeah, they got to go defense. I don't, I'm not sure if Quiddy Pay is the, the right choice. Pro I, it would definitely be J.C. Horn in real life in my opinion, but you can't be too mad about them trying to address the defense. And now at number 11, we got the New York Giants who of course got themselves a Dory Jackson. They got Kenny Galladay. They had a pretty busy offseason, but is your guy Daniel Jones? I mean, like, I, like I'm going to say this for every team that doesn't have a quarterback. Justin Fields, you take Justin Fields if you're them, but if they don't, if they want to ride with um, Mr. Daniel Jones, Danny Dimes, maybe you go Jalen Waddle, probably best player available besides the quarterbacks. He would just add a sort of dynamic, just deep threat, electric playmaker to that offense because Galladay just really isn't that. He's just a jump ball receiver, you know, and he's going to beat everyone to the ball. But as in terms of getting open, like super open separation, deep threat, Waddle would make that offense pretty dynamic, especially with Mr. Saquon Barkley coming back as well. They could even address O-line. They went Andrew Thomas number three, number four last year. I mean, he's been okay. Definitely nothing crazy, but you could even uh, double down on it and improve it even more with Christian Derisaw and Elijah Vera Tucker, Tevin Jenkins. Definitely wouldn't be some bad, bad options there. Number 11, the pick is in. The New York Giants are going with... Elijah Vera Tucker so they actually will be addressing that O-line and I'm not I'm not too opposed to that that's not a pick I'm entirely mad at but Giants fans would probably be really mad if they passed on Waddle I won't lie <laughs> All right, pick number 12 now, and it's the Eagles who originally had the number six pick, but of course traded down with the Dolphins and gathered themselves a future first round pick. So, I mean, it wasn't too bad. They could have had a Jamar Chase, Kyle Pitts potentially, but they decided to move back. And I mean, I'm going to say once again, if Justin Fields is here, you take Justin Fields. We already heard the rumors that uh, the Eagles, they don't even know if Jalen Hurts is QB1. It's still going to be like a competitive, I don't know, like a competitive battle with the QB, whoever the QB is. Of course, Wentz, they already traded him to the Colts. Jalen Hurts, the only one there now. Now, if Trey Lance, Mac Jones, or Justin Fields falls to them, they probably take it. But in this, um, if that's not the case in real life, I think the person or the players that they're mainly mocked with, Jalen Waddle, a cornerback, JC Horn is a popular one as well. Let's see what they do here at pick number 12 on Madden, of course. And they're going to go JC Horn. I'm definitely not opposed to that at all. Just bolster that cornerback group because it's definitely not the best. You got Darius Slade Jr. and then like Avante Maddox. It's definitely not great. And JC Horn would add just a different type of element to that defense. And he would be just a day one starter. So now we have the Chargers at number 13, who of course banged on their pick last year with Mr. Justin Herbert at number six, and he looked phenomenal in his first year out. However, their O-line is definitely not great. Now they did sign Corey Lindsley from the Packers in an all-pro center, so that's definitely a good start, but I think they could even double down even more. Just you gotta protect Herbert for many, many years to come. Darisol would be great here. Tevin Jenkins would be good in my opinion. They do still have Brian Belaga though, but he definitely is older. But I mean, they could even go in another direction and just get Herbert even more weapons and get Jalen Waddle, because Jalen waddle to fall um this low i think every team would be licking their lips and with the possibility of choosing him the chargers at pick number 13 what will they do here they're gonna go christian derisov so they are gonna go with the route on the o-line protect herbert they already got good weapons in you know keenan allen they did lose hunter henry though but definitely don't take a tight end this early except unless his name is the versatile weapon in kyle pitts himself <laughs> but derisov i love that pick personally for the chargers now at number 14 we got the vikings who are in a weird position this is definitely a big trade down spot in real life or like uh, rumored to be but nobody really knows which direction they could go they could go with another receiver in waddle if he falls to them and pair waddle with justin jefferson who was amazing Thielen's getting a little older now and then their offense is already electric they probably still need 
O-line help. They would have loved probably Elijah Vera Tucker there or even Mr. Uh, Christian Derisaw. He would have been great as well, but I mean... <laughs> Are you rolling with Kirk Cousins for the future? Could you imagine having Justin Fields with Justin Jefferson in the future, dude? Like, that would be unreal. I, they could even go Christian Barmore, Barmore because Mike Zimmerman said that's the worst defense he's ever coached. So, like, I mean, obviously, Daniel Hunter and some other players are coming back as well. But to improve it even more with an already really, really good offense with Dalvin Cook and, you know, everyone else that I've mentioned five times already. Improving the defense would come a long way. Christian Barmore, a possibility. JOK, Aziz Ojolari, Jalen Phillips is also really good. But... If they took Waddle, I definitely wouldn't be too opposed to that. Pick number 14, Minnesota Vikings are going with Christian Barmore. So they go with the defensive tackle, 75 rated there out of Alabama. And I'm not mad about that choice. Definitely a real possibility of happening in real life. Pick number 15 now, and it's going to be the New England Patriots. Now, the Patriots are probably like the hottest team that's like rumored around to go in ahead and trade up and try to get one of themselves a future quarterback, future franchise quarterback in like... <laughs> In this instance, in Madden's instance, Justin Fields just go ahead and, fall, and falls to them to number 15. Now, um, I've seen him fall to like 24 in real life in some mock drafts, which is just wild. I don't think he falls out of the top five, right? If he falls past the top four, a team is trading up and getting him, dude. He is like, I, I don't know why he's fallen so much, but the Patriots, they have their option. I don't even know if they're going to go him because they do have Cam Newton and on Madden on madden cam newton is a simulation god he always wins mvp and all that so who knows who they go for here maybe they go jalen waddle i mean they already signed a ton a ton of weapons on the offensive side but jalen waddle certainly would not hurt as well maybe they go defense jeremiah owusu koromoa they got options here they got options here but number 15 the pick is in the new england patriots are going with tevin jenkins so they're actually they're going with the right tackle even though they signed Trent Brown. They should have Trent Brown on this roster because, of course, it is fully updated. Everything is all good. And did they really just go with another right tackle even though they have Isaiah Wynn? They went with Onwenu last year who was a big hit. And they do have Trent Brown. So now they go Tevin Jenkins. Dude, Madden sucks. Like, actually, why would they not go Justin? F I mean, they have Cam Newton. I guess. Number 16. <laughs> oh, this game. Number 16, though, is the Arizona Cardinals, a team that desperately, desperately needs cornerback help. They have, like, nothing there but, like, Byron Murphy Jr. Just defensive help in general or O-line. However, uh, they don't need a quarterback. Kyler Murray is perfectly fine, so they don't need any of those guys. But if they could add Jalen Waddle to this offense, they would be highly, like, I, I would consider them a top, top three offense next year with D-Hop. Uh, they signed James Conner. Kyler Murray's only getting better. They signed AJ Green. They have Christian Kirk. And then now you're getting Jalen Waddle. That would be unreal. But it could be Waddle here. It could be Caleb Farley. Let's see who they go with, though. Number 16 pick, and it's going to be Jalen Waddle. There he goes. He falls all the way to number 16, and the Cardinals just could not believe it. A bit like CeeDee Lamb last year with the Dallas Cowboys. It's just too good to pass up, man. It's just too good to pass up. Jalen Waddle brings just, just a dynamic playmaker to that team. Another one, I should say. And now at pick number 17, we got the last, the last, the Las Vegas Raiders. Now, the Raiders had one of the probably the weirdest offseason um i've seen in a while they like released everyone on their old line rodney hudson trent brown who you just saw in the patriots is gone gabe jackson is now on the seahawks and then they signed um they signed mr who what's his name yannick and gagway so that, i think that's a good addition i definitely like that but then they signed Kenyon drake to like a pretty hefty size contract to be your running back too i mean you already got josh jacobs who is a beast uh, I mean, I, I don't know. They went Henry Ruggs last year, of course, number 11, the first receiver off the board. He didn't, he was not anything special in his first year, but I think with time, he's only going to get better. But I, I don't know what direction they go for here at pick number 17 in this year's draft. Let's go ahead and sim and see what Madden decides to do for them. And they get, they're going to go with Jalen Phillips. Definitely not opposed to that. A lot of people's edge won right he's probably the best edge rusher in this class but he just has the biggest the biggest red flag and that is concussion problems he is actually retired from football once before when he was on ucla he literally retired because he just had so many concussions but he came back he went to miami last year and he absolutely killed it so if you want to take the gamble it could be very well worth it but it could also come back and bite you very bad if he if those concussions just keep adding up man because he, he could potentially retire again but if he if he does stay healthy it's a hit it's a hit man 
Number 18 now, we got the Miami Dolphins. Of course, this is their original pick. That number three pick was, of course, the Houston Texans. And where do they go here? Who did they go in the first round? Who did they go in the first round? They went with Devontae Smith. So they do not need another weapon for Mr. Tuatanga Vailoa. I think they go with either JOK, Jeremiah Owusu-Koromoa there out of Notre Dame, or they go Aziz Ojolari. Edge is probably the best option here. Um, maybe even O-line, Samuel Cosme's here, Creed Humphrey. They could definitely use some help there as well. But... I think those are the main options. The running back is definitely a popular choice as well. It's just, do you want to take a running back in the first round, right? It's up to you. The Dolphins do have a pretty solid roster, so they could offer, um, or they could end up going with Najee Harris or even ETN, but Najee pairing him back up with Tua would be just amazing. I would love that personally, but... I don't think they should go with this early, probably wait for the second round, get an edge player here, whether it's Aziz Ojolari or even um, just a linebacker in Awus Kormo or slash safety, little hybrid player. Pick number 18 is here. The Dolphins are going to go Aziz Ojolari, so perfect choice there. I do love that pick if they went that route in real life as well with Devontae Smith. I would be perfectly satisfied with that. All right, so we are at pick number 19, dude. I don't know what's going on with Madden. Justin Fields is still here, and like Trey Lance and Mac Jones shouldn't even be here as well, but... Justin Fields is still here. I mean, the football team, if they do not go Fields here, I do not know what to say. I do not know what to say. But obviously, they're not, like, they're not going to be there in real life. In real life, where do they go here? They signed Curtis Samuel. Do they need Rashad Bateman? Maybe not. Jeremiah Uzkormo would be a fantastic choice here. Maybe they even take the gamble with Caleb Farley. Or get Olan help with Samuel Cosme. They got options here. Football team were definitely great last year with their number two overall pick in Chase Young. Number 19 now. They're going to go with Justin Fields. He finally goes off the board. One short of the Bears, who I'm sure would be dying to have him. But football team, Justin Fields, if he if he in whatever universe ends up going there. But maybe they trade up. Who knows? But if he goes to the football team, that would be fire, bro. That would actually be so fire with McLaurin, Curtis Samuel, Antonio Gibson. Sheesh. Next team on the clock at number 20 is, of course, the Chicago Bears, who we just mentioned. They could finally get their quarterback here, whether it's Trey Lance or Mac Jones, whichever one you like more. If they fall, you choose them. But in real life, they'd maybe go Rashad Bateman trying to get that. They, they're looking to trade Anthony Miller. It looks like Allen Robinson just hates it there. <laughs> they just tag him. So, like, I don't even know. He's probably going to leave next year. Maybe you get his replacement, Rashad Bateman. Cornerback, definitely a position to need as well. I actually have a uh, Chicago Bears realistic rebuild. If you guys want to go see that, go ahead and check that out. That video is fire. But Caleb Farley would be a fire choice here because they, of course, released Kyle Fuller for some reason. I don't know. And then O line, of course, as well. Definitely could bolster that group as well. I keep saying as well. Let's go see what the Bears choose. At number 20, it's going to be Samuel Cosme. So O line help. I mean, you can't be too mad. They already got their QB1 and Mr. Andy Dalton, of course. So got to protect him, but oh, uh, they're not passing on Trey Lance. No chance. Or even like Caleb Farley. I would take the gamble on Caleb Farley personally. The Indianapolis Colts here at pick number 21. Also a weird team. They are really good, but they did lose some big uh, some big pieces with Anthony Costanzo, their left tackle, retiring. But, you know, they have Quentin Nelson there. He's just like he's like two offensive linemen. He's so good. But and they also lost Justin Houston, an edge player who was a beast last year. I don't know which direction they go here. They do have Carson Wentz now. Maybe you go with another weapon for him. Rashad Bateman is definitely a popular choice here. Um, Caleb Farley, maybe even. Or then an edge. I don't even know who edges are still here. Maybe you take the gamble on Rousseau, Jason Owe. Who knows? The Indian Yeah, what am I saying? The Indianapolis Colts, though, at number 21. The pick is in. Let's go see what they do together. They go Caleb Farley. I definitely am not opposed to that choice at all. If he works out, he's going to be a massive steal. That's pretty much the same exact situation as Jalen Phillips. So I like the I like the choice personally. Tennessee Titans at number 22. This is another weird team. A pretty so I mean, all these teams now here are solid because they all made the playoffs. But I don't really know who they go. Like, I think a popular mock for them is definitely edge. But do you take any of the edges still here this early? I, I'm not too sure. This is definitely probably a popular trade down spot in real life. I don't know what direction they're going to go with, so let's just go ahead and find that out together. And they're going to go with Greg Newsome. I totally forgot about cornerback. They 100% need cornerback as well. And Greg Newsome would be a fantastic choice for them. They're probably wanting Caleb Farley. Maybe. I don't even know with the injury concern. But Greg Newsome, a fantastic choice in my opinion. Probably CB, what, 4 in the class. So definitely a great choice for Tennessee there. And now we, of course, have the New York Jets with their second pick of the first round, of course, acquired from the Seattle Seahawks in the Jamal Adams trade. They got themselves... Oh my god. Yeah, th this just reminded me. I was gonna say they got themselves the franchise quarterback and maybe they go with the weapon or protect him, but they went with Kyle Pitts. So, um... 
I, what do you do here? Maybe you go defense. They they made some good additions in the offseason. Carl Lawson's dope. LaMarcus Joyner's pretty good. But the Jets do still have probably one of the worst rosters in the league. Maybe just best player available. And to that, it's going to be Mr. Najee Harris. Ooh. Okay, so we get a running back um, in the first round at pick number 23. Definitely need that position as well. So, like, Najee Harris would not be terrible. But I do think there are bigger needs for the Jets in real life. I mean, they could still go with the quarterback, I'm just saying. But, I mean, running back, I, I guess. It's definitely definitely one of their biggest weaknesses. So, I'm not too mad about that. But, oh, man, the Jets, the Jets, the Jets. Kyle Pitts and Najee Harris. <laughs> Next up, we got the Pittsburgh Steelers, who, of course, were so hot in the, what, the first 12 games last season. They were amazing, but then they slowed down and lost in the first round, unfortunately. And now they have some big, big holes to fill in the O-line. The O-line is not good at all. Villanueva's gone. I think someone else, Mark Pouncey retired as well. You got to protect Big Ben because if that boy get hit, he's big retiring, bro. I'm telling you right now. But they went Claypool last year. Who did they go in the first round? Ooh, I do not remember who they went in the first round. But Claypool was a big hit in the second round. He was dope there. But, yeah, you got to go O-line here. They lost Bud Dupree as well in the uh, offseason. So, maybe you go with an edge to replace him. But they do have Alex Highsmith, who they chose in the third round, I believe, who showed definitely some flashes last year. So, Pittsburgh are in a pretty weird position here. Let's see who they go. They're going to go Creed Humphrey, so they are going to address that O-line position at center with Pouncey leaving. Definitely do not mind that pick at all for them. Now, we got the Jets, who, of course... Stayed to the plan, stayed to the scrape, went Trevor Lawrence at number one, so that's all good. They do have their franchise quarterback of the future. And now what do you do for him? Do you protect him? Do you give him more weapons? Do you address the defense? There's many options for them to go with. They do have many, many holes to fill as well. So let's go ahead and see what they do at pick number 25. They're going to go with Jameen Davis. Okay. A player that had is rising on draft boards a ton currently because he's just, he tested so good, so good out of Kentucky. Really good player there. And to pair him alongside what Joe Schobert, Miles Jack, their linebacking group is looking pretty decent there in Jacksonville if they went with this direction. I'm not opposed to that at all and now at number 26 we got them we got the cleveland browns who of course were amazing last season they have a great great roster and made some even bigger additions in this year's offseason with jadavian Clowney. and there is another one who is it bro who is it john johnson john johnson they signed john and troy hill right like they made some great great moves in the offseason to um, address their defense so they have a pretty solid roster definitely one of the most solid rosters in the league Maybe you go edge. I don't know. I mean, do you, you already had, you just signed Clowney. I don't know. What are the Browns going to do? They're going to go with a weapon for Baker Mayfield to already uh, stack up on that super stacked offense with what? Austin Hooper and Joku, Odell Beckham, Jarvis Landry, Donovan Peoples-Jones, Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, all for Baker Mayfield. And now you add Rashad Bateman as well. That would be, that would be ridiculous, man. I'm not going to lie. Man, so definitely an interesting choice there by the Browns. One that is one that is probably not going to happen at all. Like I'd give it like a two percent chance at most. Bit of a weird one, but Madden obviously is a weird game. Baltimore Ravens though, they do have two two picks now, as you can see at number thirty-one after the Orlando Brown trade with the Chiefs. So really interesting to see where they're going to go with here. The main positions mocked them are definitely wide receiver and edge. Maybe even O-line now with Orlando Brown gone. So, who knows where they're going to go here. Terrence Marshall Jr., Elijah Moore, Rondell Moore, Rashad Bateman. They probably would have loved, but the Browns just actually snatched him up, which is unfortunate. But let's go see what they do with their first pick and their actual pick. They're going to go with Gregory So, so a bit of a project player. Definitely someone who was like highly touted at the beginning as one of the best edge prospects in the class and then has just slowly died down because um, after his pro day and his testing, I mean, he wasn't, he didn't do anything too special to really scream at you or like, you know, jump off the board. But I think he's definitely a good developmental player and a, like a, going into a system like the Ravens could definitely help him become the player that, you know, we all see in his ceiling. So I think it's a good choice for the Ravens there for the future and for them as a whole. Pick number 28, we got the New Orleans Saints, and of course, Drew Brees is retired. He is not on the roster anymore. Where do they go here? I mean, if Trey Lance falls to them, if Mac Jones falls to them, you take him. That's your franchise quarterback, or like at least like you get the opportunity to even take one and see what you got with him. But in real life, where could I see them going? JOK maybe wouldn't be the worst choice. Terrence Marshall Jr. getting another weapon there. Jason Owe as well. Their O line's pretty good. Safety group is good as well. Kadarius Tony would be really good. So, they definitely have options here. Asante Samuel Jr. 
really good cornerback prospect there as they do need cornerback help because it's really just Marshawn Lattimore than who else honestly I don't know and Marshawn Lattimore is in all sorts of trouble himself I don't know what's going on with him right now but let's go ahead and sim the number 28 pick though and see where they go and they're gonna go with Jason Owe so not a bad choice they're just adding on to the uh, D line of course they did lose Mr. Trey Hendrickson in the offseason to the Bengals and they lost Sheldon Rankins I believe as well so definitely got to upgrade that position all right, now we got pick 29, and it's one of the best teams last season. A breakout team, Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs, just amazing. But where do they go here at pick number 29? It's definitely up in the air. They need another corner to pair alongside Tredavious White. Their safety groups are is amazing. I think their linebacking group is really good, too. They could use another edge as well. Definitely a big need. They do not need a receiver, probably. They sign Emmanuel Sanders as well. They definitely need O-line help, though. I think O-line would be their direction, or maybe um, cornerback, but... A lot of mocks even have them going running back, either Najee Harris, ETN. So I don't know. Maybe they go here. They do have Devin Singletary and Zach Mosso, so I don't think they should do that. I think if you want to improve your run game, you got to upgrade the O-line. So let's go ahead and see what Buffalo does here. They're going to go with JOK. Mr. Jeremiah Wiscormo finally goes off the board there. He was projected like mid first round. He falls all the way here. And the Bills just said, look, just give me the best player available and we're going to roll with it. And I definitely like that choice if he falls to them. Green Bay Packers at number 30. One of the teams that had the weirdest draft last year, A.J. Dillon, Jordan Love in the first round. I get it. I totally understand. But man, with the year Aaron Rodgers had, did they wish they either went with another cornerback to pair alongside Jair Alexander because Kevin King was not it. And we all saw that in the playoffs or go with another weapon for Aaron Rodgers, whether it was Claypool, Pittman, anyone, man. T. Higgins was still there. They had a lot of choices and they went with uh, Aaron Rodgers' successor. And I definitely get it, like I said, but man, that, like, that one more weapon could have definitely pushed them to the Super Bowl and potentially have gotten that Lombardi trophy. Pick number 30, though. Let's see which way they go. Are they going to go with a uh, weapon for Aaron Rodgers? They're going to address the cornerback position now. They're going to go with the O-line. They did lose Mr. Corey Lindsley, of course, an all-pro center last year. And he's off to the Chargers now. So, hey. Um, getting that replacement right away, Landon Dickerson, a great center prospect, probably the best one, but he does have massive injury concern as well. Barely is on the field, but his tape is unbelievable. So they're taking the gamble with that. If he can stay healthy and he's alongside what Bakhtiari, Elton Jenkins, a really good O-line already. So he could definitely flourish there. And whether he protects Aaron Rodgers or Jordan Love, who knows, but pick number 31. Now the, uh, from former Chiefs pick, of course, now belongs to the Baltimore Ravens and they went... Who did they go? I literally forgot who they went. Did they go Edge? They went with Rousseau, right? Yeah, they went Rousseau at number 27. So do they go and give Lamar Jackson another weapon? Because let's be real, the weapons on that team are not great. You got Hollywood Brown and Mark Andrews is pretty good. But like no one really separates at a high level there. Can you get one at number 31? You might as well try. Baltimore Ravens, they're going to go with Josh Myers. Of course, they did lose Matt Skura, lost DJ Fluker, lost Orlando Brown. They lost a lot of pieces on the O-line, so that's actually not a choice that I'm too mad about. But Josh Myers, definitely not a guy that's really uh, looked at in the first round too often. But hey, the Ravens like their guy. They're going to take their guy, and they're going to roll with it. So I'm not too mad about that. Now, with the final pick in the first round, we got ourselves the Buccaneers. And with the second round, I'll probably sim the second round, but we will go definitely a lot faster. Just we'll like speed through it. I won't talk like how I'm doing with the first round. But of course, the Super Bowl reigning champs, Buccaneers, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers re-signed every single player that they could have potentially lost. Insane, except for like Antonio Brown, but I mean, that's a fine. They got like what, Shaq Barrett back, Levante David back, Chris Godwin they franchise tagged. Like, unreal. They have a solid roster, but I think, um, you know, their team just really shows that drafting correctly can really just elevate you because Tristan Wirfs last year, who they go with, a tackle. I mean, he just, he was an all pro tackle right off the bat. And then they went with Antoine Winfield in the second round. And he was an amazing, an amazing piece to that Super Bowl winning team. So yeah, drafting right is so important. Let's go ahead and see what they do here. They could go edge potentially in real life. That's probably the most popular thing they go with. They're going to go with O-line though. And I'm not too mad about that because, hey, just protect um, Tom Brady, I guess, for another year or two or three or four or five. But <laughs> just getting him and Worfs, getting your two franchise tackles potentially, can never can never argue with that man but now we're in the second round let's go ahead and just sim it uh quickly now as we got the jags number one they're gonna go with trevon melrig best safety in the class number two here the jets who have just had the most wild draft with kyle pitts and Najee harris so weird they go with javon holland there out of u of old sco ducks love that choice falcons terrace marshall jr okay so they take him to pair alongside julio jones to pair alongside calvin ridley russell gage jr that's pretty who did they go they went with Panay Sewell right so yeah they're just adding that offense even more even though that team's offense is already 
super good. They just need defense. And they have gone with offense of the first two choices. Really weird, but number four, go with ETN, Dolphins. They go Nick Bowen. I, I would like them to go running back in this position in real life, but linebacker, definitely not mad about that as well. Of course, they did trade for Bernardic McKinney. So, I mean, that linebacking group is looking really good now. And they lost Kyle Van Noy. So, I mean, Nick Bowen is definitely a great player. I'm not too mad. Hopefully, Javante or ETN falls to them, though, at number 18, because I would love that in real life. Uh, Broncos at number five. The second round picks are definitely not, like, in the super correct order. So, don't blame me for that. I cannot do every single pick in every single order i just did the first round but everything here is like what it originally was after i uh fixed all the results there so the broncos are gonna go with another linebacker then they go micah parsons now they're gonna go with zavin collins they have what malik reed vaughn miller bradley chubb i don't know i don't know what you're doing broncos <laughs> Bengals at number six are gonna protect joe burrow with their second round pick so definitely a high possibility that happens in real life I, the Bengals have been on script they've been perfect jamar chase first round get joe burrow protection second round love it good good stuff Bengals. good stuff number seven we got the eagles and they're gonna go with pat Fryermith. i believe they win jc horn in the first round they're gonna go with the tight end now with Ertz potentially gone but they already have goddard I don't know. I mean, just give Hurts all the weapons you can, I guess. Eric Stokes goes to the Lions. Did they not? Didn't they go Sertan? So now they have Stokes, Sertan, and Okuda. I mean, that could be a deadly trio of cornerbacks for years to come. And I, I don't hate the direction they're going. Or did they go Slater? I think they went Slater. They went Slater. And I think the Panthers went Sertan. So they get their, um, another pairing for Jeffrey Okuda there. Wyatt Davis, the Panthers go with O-line. Uh, no, I'm getting them mixed up. Panthers are going to go with O-line now and just protect Sam Darnold. I like that choice. They went Sertan in the first one. I keep getting them mixed up with the lines. Oh, number 10, the Cowboys. Davian Nixon, defensive tackle. Like it. I'm just going to, I need to go faster, dude. I keep, I keep just talking too much. ETN goes to the Giants. That makes zero sense with Saquon coming back, but okay. Asante Samuel to the 49ers. They need 49ers, or they need 49ers help. They need cornerback help. Sherman's gone. They did sign Verrett, but they lost like pretty much everyone there. Carlos Basham Jr. Boogie Basham goes to the uh, Vikings to pay, uh, pair alongside who do they go? Uh, Christian Barmore. So that D line's even getting better. Love that choice. Leatherwood. Get another O-line member because you release all of them for some reason. Don't know why. Patriots number 15, Levi Onuzrige out of Washington, a.k.a. N.A., according to Madden. Good choice, good choice. Joseph Osai, Cardinals, like that choice as well, getting the edge rusher. They could not pass up on Jalen Waddle in the first round, of course. Number 17, now we got the Chargers. They're going to go with even more protection. Darisol in the first round, Jalen Mayfield in the second. You could potentially have two franchise tackles for Justin Herbert. Once again, I'm not going to argue with that ever. Go Javante Williams. They went with Javante Williams. One of the best running backs in this class. Of course, the top running backs are so good. Whether it's Najee Harris, ETN, or Javante Williams, or even Michael Carter, bro. Any choice of those four, it's probably going to be a hit. They are so good. So, Javante to the Finns. I love that, personally. Because they they need a better run game than last year. It was terrible. Football team, number 19, Liam Eikenberg. O-line, love it. Bears, number 20, Brady Christensen. A really good tackle right now, but he is a little older. I think he's like 25, 24. He's really, really old, but he should be like a plug and play immediately. So it can't be too mad. Quinn Miners, I guess. Quinn Miners is definitely a big, big time. Uh, he boosted a lot from his pro day. He was amazing. Of course, as you can see, he's out of Wisconsin Whitewater. I need to stop talking. But yeah, he he, he's, he showed out against some of the best edge rushers in the class. But the Colts to go O-line again, kind of weird. Actually, I don't know who they went first round, to be honest. Kadarius Tony falls to the Titans. Yeah, take him all day. Love that choice because they did lose Corey Davis. Rondell Moore to the Seahawks. Ooh, with their first pick, of course, in this year's draft. They should probably go O-line, though. I'm not going to lie. They have they have some pretty good weapons. But Timmy Togai, okay, I like that. Defensive tackle goes to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Not too mad about that at all. Rams with their first pick go with Aaron Robinson. Can't hate that as well. They do need just uh, DBs in general. They lost John Johnson, Troy Hill. So not mad about that. I do like that pick. Browns 26, Baron Browning. The name just fits. I think it's a good fit for them. Their linebacking group is definitely not the strongest. So like that. Chiefs are going to go with Richie Grant. So they get themselves a really good safety prospect. One of my favorite safety prospects in the class. Probably like top three. Really good pick there by the Chiefs. But... Yeah, I mean, they look solid. They do have their own line now with Orlando Brown, Joe Tooney, Kyle Long. So just bolster up that defense because you know Mahomes is going to give you points um, if he's protected. If he's protected. Hamsa Nazirladeen from Bama. Is he from Bama? Is he from Bama? He's for Florida State. I have no idea why that says Bama, but 
<laughs> whatever the Saints go him at pick number 28 in the second round. Uh, the Bills now, pick number 29, Ronnie Perkins. Definitely a good edge prospect as well and a position of need for the Bills, so I like that. Number 30, the ooh, the Packers go with the weapon for Rodgers, and they're going to pair him with another Rodgers, and it's Amari Rodgers. So a lot of Rodgers, Rodgers connection next year potentially. Out of Clemson, definitely a good wide receiver prospect as well. Chiefs with their... Um, with their second second round pick as well. I totally forgot about that. Go with Joe Tryon. Linebacking group help. Definitely need help at that group. And with the last pick of the second round, the Buccaneers are going to go with Elijah Moore. Like that. So basically, just your Antonio Brown replacement and potentially Chris Godwin with him potentially leaving because they did have to tag him. But now that's going to be it. I'm going to head it. I'm going to go ahead and sim to the end and we can go ahead and check out every team in depth a little bit more. All right, let's get into every team and their draft choice. I'm going to try to speed through this because this video is probably getting a little long already. So Samuel Cosme, Brady Christensen, Victor Dimekeji, Joshua Ross, Ardarius Washington at TCU, and then, hey, the Bra or the Bears went with their franchise quarterback in the seventh round, Shane Bukele. I have no idea. Bengals, though, went on script. Jamar Chase at number five, Protect Burrow. Walker Little, second round, Kenneth Gainwell. Like that as well. Jalen Twyman, another great choice. Kylan, Bur Kylan Granson, Darius Stills, and then Kerry Vincent Jr., the Bengals hit on a lot of their draft picks, in my opinion. The Bills, JOK in the first round, Ronnie Perkins in the second. Definitely like that. James Hudson, get another tackle. Pro Wells, Jack Anderson, and Tommy Kramer. Cool. Broncos up next, and they went Michael Parsons. And then Zayvon Collins. Ooh, Marlon Tui Pulatu. Chaba Hubbard. Tyree Galipsy, who I like. Oza Ad Ad Oh my goodness. Odigizua. These names. Jamar Jefferson, shout out OSU as well. And then Kyrie Campbell to end it off there for Denver. The Browns went with Rashad Bateman in the first round. Crazy. Baron Browning fits the name. Kellen Mond. They go with him in the third round. I don't know why. They have Baker Mayfield. Ifiatu Melifonu, great cornerback prospect as well. Spencer Brown, Tylen Wallace. Tylen Wallace and Rashad Bateman. This offense is just stupid. Charles Snowden, Trey Brown, and then um, Kyrie. Ky you know his name. I don't know. Rashad Wild Goose. What a name, dude. What? But... Wow, what a weird choice, but they got Melifonu, a cornerback. It's definitely a top need for them. They go with, with a pretty good one in the third round. Dylan Reduns for the Buccaneers, then Elijah Moore, Ali McNeil, Brady White. So they went with another Brady at quarterback to hopefully success. Brady himself, Drake Jackson, KJ Britt, Miller, Forrestal in the last round. Cardinals, Waddle, too good to pass up, makes that offense even more dynamic. Joseph Osai, another great choice, as well as J2 Fele. Ola Elijah Griffin. It's that's spelled so weird. Robert Jones, Dwayne Eskridge, another player I really like in this class as well. That offense is also super high powered. Chargers protect Herbert, Darisol, Jalen Mayfield, and then Jabril Cox in the third round. Really like that. Marvin Wilson, Sedarius Hutcherson, Dalen Hayes, Dayami Brown in the last round could be a definite gem for them. Chiefs, Chiefs, Chiefs. No first round picks, but two seconds, and they got themselves Richie Grant and Joe Tryon. Patty Fisher down there in the fifth round, and then Daz Newsom, another weapon for Mahomes. He would flourish there, in my opinion. Who wouldn't flourish there? Let's be real. Caleb Farley goes to the Colts, and then they go Quinn Miners, and then Jackson Carmen to be the Casanzo replacement. Adrian Eli, another tackle. Wap Fillor, Thomas Graham Jr. to round it out. Cowboys, pick number 10. They went with Quiddy Pay, and then Damian Nixon in the second round. Pete Werner, Davis Mills, and Jacoby Stevens. So they upgraded their defense a ton, and that's definitely what they need to do. Dolphins went with the Heisman winner and pair him alongside uh, Tua once again. Of course, out of Bama, it's Devontae Smith. Aziz Ojalari at 18. Nick Bolton with their first our first pick in the second round, and then Javante Williams later on. Janarius Robinson, Amon Ross St. Brown, Cleo Herbert, and then Seth Williams as a Finns fan. I love this draft. Honestly, I love those choices. Eagles, JC Horn, Pat Fryermith, Andre Sisko, Cameron McGrone. Ooh, I like these choices there. As you can see, I'm not I'm actually just not gonna say everyone else. I'll, I'll go over the big ones. Panay Sewell, Terrace Marshall Jr., Mac Jones in the third round. So they actually do get their successor to Matt Ryan, as well as adding him some crazy weapons and protection as well. Milton Williams, I like Puka Williams is cool as well. Falcons had a pretty good draft, but they didn't address the defense at all. Zach Wilson, of course, fell to number three, and the Niners said, give me that all day long. And then they bolster their cornerback group with Asante Samuel Jr., get some O-line in Deontay Brown. Patrick Jones Jr. is good as well. Reed Blankenship, pretty good draft there by the Niners. Definitely well worth the trade-up if you can get Zach Wilson. AVT, Elijah Vera Tucker goes to the Giants. They get ETN in the second round. Kelvin Joseph, Monty Rice, KJ Costello. Decent, decent draft there by the Giants. Trevor Lawrence, number one pick, of course. And they went Jameen Davis at number 25. Melrig at, uh, with their first round pick in the with their first pick in the second round. Love those top three choices, honestly. And then Quincy Roche as well, another player I really like. And then they went with some 
uh, weapons. Tommy Tremble for with Lawrence, some protection. Houston Emily, my realistic rebuild legend. The Jaguars had a great draft, in my opinion. Jets, 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 Jets. The Jets just went so off board a script. They threw my script in the dumpster and just went their own way. They went Kyle Pitts at number two. Then they go with Najee Harris at number 23. So they went with a tight end and a running back. Oh my God. And then Javon Holland, though. Great choice. Hey, hey, hey. I guess they knew what they were doing. Trey Lance falls to them somehow. Some. I don't know why. I tried to. He's literally an early projected first. But. I guess the Jets know what they're doing, and Trey Lance falls them in the third round, so they get him. I guess I can't be too mad now, because they got their quarterback, and they got him some crazy weapons now. All right, Madden. All right. They just 200 IQ'd me. Rashawn Slater to the Lions. Eric Stokes. Cameron Sample. Really like those choices for the Lions, as they got to build up their roster. They're going to have plenty more draft picks in years to come. Lennon Dickerson. Lindsey replacement. Amari Rodgers. Gives Rodgers another weapon. Dylan Moses. Benjamin St. Just. So they get their quarterback. Really like that choice as well. Panthers. Who had pick number eight. And they opted to, opted to go with. Opted to go with Patrick Sertan. The second. Wyatt Davis. Nico Collins. Dio Oduying, Odeyengbo. I don't know. <laughs> it's a tough day, bro. You can't, can't slack on me. Tevin Jenkins. Very weird pick for the Patriots. Especially having Trent Brown in this franchise mode as well. Levi Wuzurike. Cool. Sean Wade. Like that. Aaron Banks. Payne Turner. Pretty decent draft here. But uh, no, no. It wasn't a good draft. They could have had Justin Fields. <laughs> Raiders. Jalen Phillips. They get O-line with Alex Leatherwood. Jamar Johnson. Ramondre Stevens. Not bad at all for the Raiders. Who have to build their team just in a weird direction now, to be honest. Aaron Robinson goes in the second round in their first choice for the Rams. Hunter Long. And those guys. Ravens, who had two first-round picks. One with Rousseau, Josh Myers. Then they get Talanoa Hufanga, Tyler Shelvin. Trey McKitty, what a name. But yeah, Ravens, pretty successful draft in my opinion. Not too bad, of course. But they did lose um, some big addition, some big pieces in the offseason. Justin Fields fell to 19 of the football team. Are you kidding me? That team would be unreal. And then they protect him right away. Liam Eichenberg. They get Trey Sermon, another running back. Tyson Campbell. Deontay Smith, a 2 2 Atwell. The football team had a successful draft, in my opinion. Saints, Jason Owe, Hamsun Nazirudin out of Florida State, not Alabama. I don't know why it says that. Paulson Adebo. Um, they get their quarterback, Sam Elling Elling Ellinger. Hey, I guess why not try it out? Sage Surratt there in the last round. Cool choice. Seahawks did not have a first rounder, but they get Rondo Moore in the second. Kylan Hill. Definitely another good running back prospect. Nick Eubanks, Tay Gowan. Really good prospect as well. Then Shaka Tony. Both in the seventh round. Steelers went with Creed Humphrey to replace uh, the outgoing Pouncey, Tommy Tagai, Chaz Surratt, Rashad Weaver. Not Tamori and Terry down here in the seventh round as well. Pretty decent draft by the Steelers. They're Texans. Of course, we didn't even see the Texans. We didn't even mention them once, but they get Michael Carter there in the third round with their first choice. Kenny Yaboa, Ben Cleveland, Jamie Newman. Maybe Deshaun Watson's out. Who knows? We don't. We certainly do not know yet. He's in a weird situation. Greg Newsom goes number 22 for the Titans. I love that pick. Kadarius Tony falls to them. Kyle Trassi in the third round. Divine Diablo. Ooh, the Titans had a sneaky good draft in my opinion. Uh, they could pair up uh, Trask back up with Kadarius Tony as well. Christian Barmore, Carlos Basham, Brevin Jordan, Trey Smith, Caden Stearns to the uh, Minnesota Vikings. They had a really good draft as well, and that's going to be the last team to round it off here. So, pretty good draft, but we're not done yet. We're going to go ahead and just sim one season, just speed it throughout it. I'll see you guys in there. All right, so we are in, and we are the Jaguars, just because, you know, first pick, and it's the NFL draft. Let's just go ahead and literally generate best lineup. That is it. This is the team. Trevor Lawrence is here, of course, and we're literally just going to sim to the playoffs now and see how everything does uh, or how everything unfolds with their new rookie edition. So if you guys made it to this point of the video, I would definitely love it if you guys could hit a thumbs up because I'm assuming you guys are enjoying it, right? You guys are still here. You guys are still watching. If you guys haven't subscribed already, please do as well. It will help me out tremendously and just to help me grow. And then more, it motivates me to put out more content like this, more realistic rebuilds, more uh, franchise challenges, rebuilds. All, all that good stuff. Madden franchise content. If you love it, stay tuned because I got a ton more in the future. As the first season for Trevor Lawrence, they end up 6-10. and 10, So definitely an improvement on last season. But yeah, let's just go ahead and check out the the records for every single team. We got here. So the Browns end up 13-3. and three. Of course, simulation gods. Cardinals add Waddle. Joseph Osai, I believe. They go 13-3. and three, So a huge improvement. Bengals, would you look at that with Jamar Chase. And of course, who did they go? Walker Little. 
they elevate themselves and get a playoff spot. Cowboys good, Saints, Packers, Patriots, Giants, Buccaneers, Ravens, Raiders, Chiefs 9 and 7. After adding Orlando Brown, dang. Tex the Texans made it. Oh my, all right, now you're tweaking. <laughs> Falcons end up making it as well as like, what did the Sim is? I don't, the Jets, I mean, the Jets had a successful draft. They did get their QB. Titans were 8-8, eight eight. the Bills were 8-8. Eight eight. The football team with Justin Fields, 8-8. Eight eight. The Niners were bad for some reason. I think the Niners are going to be crazy good. I mean, who do they get? They got Zach Wilson, 7-9, and nine. that's wild. But other teams down here, Steelers, 6-10, and 10. Bears, 6-10, and 10. Seahawks, 6-10, and 10. wow. They, they barely, they finished with the same record as the Lions and the Jaguars. The Colts were bad as well. Are you kidding me? The Dolphins were the worst team and they don't even have their first round pick because it's with the Eagles. Feels bad, bro. <laughs> that better not happen in real life or I'm going to be pissed for my guy Tua. Let's go ahead and sim to the Super Bowl week. Just see what happens. Who's going to win? A rookie probably is not going to do much. And it's actually, hey, we're getting a rookie in it. And it's Jamar Chase, Walker Little. Who do the Giants go? Who did the Giants go? They went with Elijah Vera Tucker, right? Okay, yeah. So, yearly awards. Let's just go ahead and check out the rookies. See um, who won. How did he win a and a How did he win MVP? I hate this game. And let's go AFC first. Let's go defense or offensive rookie of the year. That goes to our guy, Mr. Trevor Lawrence. Najee Harris at number two. Devontae Smith at number three. Jamar Chase, four. Michael Carter picked in the third round. Ends up number five. Kenneth Gainwell. Chubba Harvard. Ramondre Stevens. Javante Williams at Pro Wells. A lot of running backs in here. For defensive rookie of the year in the AFC. Chaz Surratt gets that. Greg Newsom, Javon Holland, Caleb Farley at number four. Richie Grant, Joe Tryon, Aziz Ojalari, Gregory Rousseau, Jalen Twyman, and then Patty Fisher to round out in the AFC. NFC now. Let's go ahead and check the offense. We're the year first, and it's Mr. Justin Fields. Steal of the draft, probably. Amari Rogers looked like he enjoyed his first season with Rogers. Uh, Jarrett Patterson gets in here. Trey Sermon, Rondell Moore, Jalen Waddle there. Travis Etienne, Puka Williams, Demetric. Demetric, yeah, Demetric Felton, and then Kylan Hill. Defense rookie of the year went to Davian Nixon and Quiddy Pay at top two. The Cowboys are loving life with those two draft choices. Patrick Sertan at number three, Cameron Grone, Nazir Ladeen, Carlos Basham, Garrett Wallow, Asante Samuel Jr., Tatu Fele, and Dylan Moses. That's going to round it out for that. Let's just go ahead and sim it because why not? Does Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow first season back together? Do they win themselves another championship? They do. Wow. So, Maybe they should go with Jamar Chase number one instead of Panay Sewell, not number one, number five. But yeah, that's going to end it off for this video. This was a super fun one to uh, to make and just to watch over. Definitely interesting to see how Madden <laughs> decided to do everything for some reason, even though like I tried to fix it as much as possible with the draft, putting you know all the quarterbacks at the top, and they still fought in the third round. Not much I can do about that. It's just Madden being Madden. But if you guys did enjoy, please do comment down below. And, you know, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you didn't already. I hope you guys did enjoy. My name is Pum Vongsa, though. Take care, everybody. Peace.